what's this next question say? If ever if every wide receiver is gone, do we draft Kinlaw or Henderson or trade down? Um, if every wide receiver is gone, and that I guess that would have to include Henry Ruggs, because I think if Ruggs is there at 13 and there's no Judy and no Lynn, they would take Ruggs at 13. But let's say that, that Ruggs is gonna go ahead and be gone. Um, then yeah, I'd probably take Kinlaw over Henderson because I don't like I don't I don't like CJ Henderson at all in this draft. I, I, there are a lot of people who do the cornerback out of Florida. I don't. I like Javon Kinlaw a lot better. So yeah, I would take Kinlaw over uh, Henderson before I would trade down if they're going to be there. Although they would take Henry Ruggs if he's there and Jerry Judy and CeeDee Lamb are not. Okay, do you guys think the NFL draft will be delayed? I don't think it will, but a lot of people are saying that it still could potentially be delayed based on all the cyber Zoom worry that's happening in the NFL. If you guys think the NFL draft will be delayed, type Y down below for yes, type N down below for no. I'm going to type N because I really don't think that that is going to happen. But still, uh, I guess we got to wait and see what happens with the NFL draft. Type Y for yes, type N for no. All right, moving on. Use hashtag 49ers. Get your questions in on the show. We still have time for more questions, so keep those hashtags coming. Again, a lot of people typing in right there. I would totally agree. I don't see any sort of a scenario where they're not going to go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get to our next question. All right, so Billy asked, top five players you want that is realistic, if not trade back. Hmm, let me think about this. Top five players that is realistic. Um... Jeez, let me think about this. I think realistically, you, you could get Andrew uh, Thomas out of Georgia. There's one. Realistically, Henry Ruggs. Realistically, you could obviously go ahead and get Justin Jefferson. Realistically, you could go ahead and get Javon Kinlaw. That's four. Um, Derek Brown's not realistic. Okuda's not realistic. I guess C.D. Lamb, although, again, is he realistic? That's the real question right there. Those would probably be be my five. It's, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting in terms of who's my favorite guy. I would like C.D. Lamb. If C.D. Lamb is not there, I'd like Jerry Judy. If Jerry Judy's not there, I would like Henry Ruggs. If all three of them are not there, then I would go Javon Kinlaw. If Kinlaw is not there, then... And then I'd, I would go ahead and go Andrew Thomas at offensive line. How about that? Or maybe Thomas ahead of Kinlaw. You know, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens at number 13 overall. Good Lord. There are so many good players in this draft. Hopefully, we get the best one at number 13. Okay, other questions we got going on here. Dustin Rawson says, on a scale of 1 to 10, how concerned are you over Joe Staley's future next season? Well, in the words of uh, The Athletic, they said it's a 50-50 chance that he plays next season. So I'd say a 5, halfway. I think he's going to play. But at the same time, I'm not convinced he's going to play. I think he's going to play. After the Super Bowl, he made it sound like he's going to play. But now, again, the Athletics just said 50-50 chance he's going to retire, 50-50 chance he's going to play. I think he will play, but I'm telling you, Joe, please let us know before the draft, because if Joe Stato retires, then we take a offensive lineman, a tackle at number 13 overall, Thomas out of Georgia, uh, the guy from Alabama, whoever's there at 13 has the best uh, offensive tackle. That's where you go. I hope he doesn't. I don't think he will. But if he does, they better have a backup plan because I don't trust Justin School at the starting uh, spot. Okay, Evan asked here, uh, who emerged as the second best, I'm oh, sorry, who emerges as the best second year 49er player? Is it Greenlaw? It'll probably be D Debo Samuel, just because that's the easy answer. Dre Greenlaw was fantastic last year. I mean, Dre Greenlaw is the reason we are not talking about uh, taking a linebacker at number 13 overall. Greenlaw's the reason. He played so darn well, obviously coming out of Stanford and getting drafted in about the fourth or fifth round, wherever he was. Had that great tackle on, uh, on Luke Wilson at the goal line against Seattle to kind of save the number one overall seat. Because Dre Greenlaw played so darn well this past year, I think that that has kind of gotten us away from having him take an outside linebacker, even though there are some really good ones, like the one out of Oklahoma, and then obviously Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. Doubt he'll be there at 13, but you guys go ahead and get my point. Um, let's see. Isaiah Schalbreck, he asked, trade or cut Pettis? Uh, I, I, neither, because what's the point of cutting him? Because you need wide receiver bodies in the backup role. I think he's going to be a 49er when the season starts. Cutting him doesn't do much unless you just hate him that much. You don't believe in he's going to be that good at all. I mean, listen, your four receivers this year will be Debo Samuel, Kendrick Bourne, this is not in any order, Jalen Hurd, and your rookie. There's four. You still need a five and a six. And I think Bourne is probably better than Trent Taylor. Sorry, a good guy. Pettis is probably better than Trent Taylor. Definitely better than Marquise Goodwin. So he's, what, the fifth receiver on this team? I don't see us cutting him unless Kyle Shanahan says he's a completely lost cause, which in that case, then he'll be cut during training camp. Um, what is Marquise Goodwin's worth in terms of draft picks? Jeez. It is, it is, is nothing the right answer? I mean, what, a sixth-round draft pick? A seventh-round draft pick? 
He's worth nothing. They've been shopping him for months, especially for the uh, before the NFL offseason in terms of free agency. Nothing for him. Z I mean, nobody wanted to make an offer. Miami was interested, according to reports, but we probably wanted a fit, and the Dolphins laughed at that. Goodwin is like 50 years old. He's not as fast as he once was. He's been injured. He had 12 catches last year. He's not worth anything more than a sixth or seventh. That's why no one's trading for him, because he is more likely to be cut than Dante Pettis. Um... Anthony, Anthony is going to go ahead and ask, what do you think Brandon Ayuk, uh, do you think Brandon Ayuk would be a good draft for us if the big three are not there? I do, but not at 13 or 31. Ayuk is a second round uh, prospect. He's not a first round prospect. He had two years at Juco and then he had his junior season where he didn't play well at all. He's only recently been decent at Arizona State his senior year. That's not enough production consistently to make me want to take him at number 31. You have to have a second round draft pick. Now you trade back and he's there, sure, but there are still better receivers. Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame, to me, is a better overall receiver than Brandon Ayuk. Jalen Rager, not a first-round guy. I would be very happy with him in the second round overall. KJ Hamler out of Penn State, he's a second-round guy as well. Ayuk is really, really good. He's also dual-purpose, can also return the football pretty well, but he's not a first-round draft prospect. Uh, prospect you would take Higgins you would take Jefferson you would probably take Chenault over him as well at 13 if the rest of them are gone um other questions here by Jackie trade CJ for a fourth or sixth round draft pick um I mean I guess I guess you maybe get a sixth round draft pick for him I don't know I don't think you're gonna get much for him overall next question here says will they go Who's this? Derek Bolton asked, will they go with three quarterbacks again this year? It's looking that way. Unless someone makes us a crazy good offer for Nick Mullins. I, I, you know, I talked about this in a video the other day, and the top comment says, Mott wants to keep him, but would also trade him for a second. I'm confused. Uh, well, what's confusing about that? Of course, I want to keep Nick Mullins, but if they offered us a second round draft pick for him, which nobody ever would, that was the point of me saying it. If they would offer us a second, I would trade him, but no one's going to do that. So Nick Mullins will stay on the team and Bethard will probably stay on the team unless there is a major injury in, pre in for training camp or in the off season from another quarterback. And then we go ahead and trade them again. Last year, Denver was calling. There were multiple teams calling about Mullins. We kept him. There's a reason we're keeping Mullins on this team. I don't know if it's going to be revealed later on this year, next year, whatever, but Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch love this guy, and so I think they're going to go ahead and keep him, and Beathard has been a good a good soldier on this team as well. He'll probably be quarterback number three. My favorite question of the show, as always, shout out your city. Who's the furthest away from me here in Atlanta, Georgia? Type in the comments. Where are you guys watching from? I am in the great state of Georgia in Atlanta. It's a beautiful afternoon right now here in Atlanta, Georgia as well. Where are you guys watching? Be honest. Where are you watching from right now? I'll give a shout out to the guy who looks like he's furthest away oregon virginia california sacramento uh springfield okay so a lot of people so far california is pretty far from atlanta anything on the west coast right now is probably going to win um oregon oklahoma texas austria there's, a, there's the austria guy the austria guy's there a lot he is uh, probably as far away as anybody osaka japan that one's really far away spartanburg south carolina i've been there um germany stuttgart Good Lord, a lot of people. San Jose, it's going so fast. Osaka, Waco, where I went to college. Uh, Arizona, Redmond, San Jose, Japan, Texas, California. Okay, so we are, I mean, we're all over the place. I think Japan wins, right? Japan's further away than Austria and Germany. It's a longer flight overall. I mean, let's get our little map out here and figure out where it all is. Japan probably wins um, Tucson, Arizona. I've been to Tucson. Phoenix is a beautiful place to live as well. Iowa, the ocean. Someone is literally on the ocean right now watching this video. Bora Bora. If you're actually in Bora Bora, then you're definitely going to win because that is very far away and also uh, beautiful right now. Japan probably won. Yeah, I agree. Japan pro probably won. Keep shouting out your city. There's Victor in Honolulu. I'm always jealous of Victor Wolf because he's in Honolulu, Hawaii, having a great time compared to all of us else here on the state side and the rest of the, the states where we don't have the beach in front of us unless you're in like Florida, I guess. Okay. Uh, final questions here. Go ahead and roll through a couple more. Coach Gomez, what do you think of Denzel Mims? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked. I love Denzel Mims. He might be my favorite receiver. That's not one of the big three in this draft of Ruggs, uh, Jerry Judy, and CeeDee Lamb. Mims went from a fourth round guy. You asked any draft scout over the past year, watching Denzel Mims play, even when he was catching 12 touchdowns at Baylor, my alma mater, they all said fourth round. And in the span of the end of Baylor season, losing to Georgia in the, in the Sugar Bowl, 
up till right now, Mims has gone from a fourth round draft pick to a first round draft pick. Denzel Mims will go in the first round. The question is where? Will he go at 21 to Philadelphia? Could he go at 22 to Buffalo? Could he go to the Vikings a little bit later on in the first round? Could San Francisco take him at number 31? Boy, think about that draft real quick. What if they got an O lineman at 13 and Denzel Mims at 31? Man, wait a second. That might be perfect. That would be really, really fun overall. See, and Coach, I love him, okay? Let me just say, if we draft him, I'll be through through the moon. He's not worth 13. I think there are some better ones, but don't be surprised if Mims turns out to be the best receiver in this draft class. You heard it from me first, right? You heard it from me first. Um, next question here, Derek Jackson. How well do you think Ruggs' style of play would fit in the Shanahan's offense? Very well. I mean, listen, we need a speed guy because Marquise Goodwin's 50. Like, I keep joking. He is very old, though. He's not the speed guy that he once was. And Samuel's not necessarily a vertical deep threat. And Jalen Hurts more of a cross-the-middle slot type of guy as well. That's what Ruggs does best. You don't run a 4-2-7, four, 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 a 4-3, whatever the heck it was at the combine. I think a 4-2-7, crazy fast, and not be a vertical threat. He's averaging like 18.1 yards per reception, which means he's getting deep. I think he probably would go ahead and fit very, very well in the Kyle Shanahan offense. And that's why if Lamb and Judy are gone at 13, they might just pull the trigger on Ruggs and take him and be very, very happy with it. Okay, um, Rick the Flame asks, is Debo Samuel the next big thing? Um, I mean, next big thing in terms of what? I, I, I think, I mean, is he, the, is he the next great receiver in the NFL? No. Is he the next Tyreek Hill? No. Is he the next really good Second option right now in, I guess, first option in San Francisco. Yeah, he's going to be really good. Is he going to be a perennial pro bowler like Julio Jones? No, not at all. That's not Debo Samuel's style. Is he going to be talked about like Tyreek Hill is? No, I don't think so. He's great. He's going to be even better this year. But I just don't see a pro bowl receiver compared to the other receivers in the National Football League. I don't hate it. I mean, don't think I hate you. I love, I love Debo Samuel. He played great last year. But I don't think he's going to be a perennial pro bowler, if that's the question that we are asking. All right, I'm going to wrap the show up here. Get us to 20,000 subs. I think we're 400 away. All the latest 49ers news, rumors, updates, draft covers. The draft two weeks away, starting today. And we're going to have plenty of coverage as the news goes ahead and changes day-to-day -day as it will. So be sure to subscribe here on the 49ers Report.